So this is a pretty cool image of a Hubble telescope um, with its eye on the universe. It's really, um, I stumbled upon a bunch of archived images of NASA in a lot of different areas. And this right here is uh, very interesting if you look at it. It does look like a great big gigantic eyeball on the uh, look at that little bitty center. Look like a little bitty um, teeny tiny sun at the center. Uh, so let's go over there, you all. This is okay. Hello there, Apple Brooks, honey. Yes, hello everyone. Uh, good evening, you all. We look at that screen. See, we don't got very many people, but that's okay, you all. I'm gonna still look at this because this is really um, interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna put the link here. Uh, oopsie. Let's put the link to these uh, Hubble telescopes. Let's see if I got this on. L let me see if I can get this on me first. I want to see if I can get the um, YouTube going up here. You all, this has got some pretty cool images of the um, Hubble telescope. You know, I think sometimes NASA gets a, a bad rap, but you know, they have made a lot of contributions to the world with all these pretty images. Even if they are just pieces of arc, you can, um, you can appreciate if you love artwork. Oopsie, you can appreciate the art in these. You all look at that. Um, so look at all of these images. We're going to look at some of them. You all, we are boom. Look at this. You got the, you got the link right there to the archived images. So that's going to be neat. Um, hello there, sun from the sun. Hello there, Apple Brooks. Hello there, Susan B. Honey. Hello, you all. I'm doing pretty good. I was getting here sleepy, and I'm staring at these images, and I thought, oh, wow. This is kind of making me sleepy, you all. But I, I looked at some of these, and you know, you've probably seen some of these right here. Hubble celebrating uh, 15th anniversary with spectacular images. That is really nice. Um, I wish I could, like, zoom through them, but I, I really can't. This is... Um, Constellation Canis Venatici, the Whirlpool Galaxy, you all. This is in the Whirlpool Galaxy, so that looks pretty cool right there. The uh, Omega Centauri right here. Omega Centauri. What, oh, wow, this looks wild. The Carina Nebula, star birth in the extreme. That does look a little extreme right here. Um, and you can see we're at the um, the NASA website. Look at this. Is, this is a little wild looking. This looks like plasma or something. Um, a Hubble astronomer creates a spectacular galaxy collision visualization for the National Air and Space Museum. Y'all, this is pretty, this is pretty cool, you all. This may not get a lot of people, but that's all right, you all. I wanted to um, get to some more. Look at that. That is wild. Look at that. The um, NGC 6302. That doesn't even. Butterfly emerges from a stellar demise in planetary nebula. NGC 6302. Looks like a delicate butterfly, you all. So um, let me look at this one that I have on here. So this is... Um, Hubble reopens its eye on the universe. This is uh, Eskimo Nebula. The first glimpse of the heavens. This is the heavens. You see that? They say it's the heavens. Following the successful December 1999 servicing mission of Hubble Telescope captured a majestic view of a planetary nebula, the glowing remains of a dying Sun like star? Y'all, what if it was our sun that was dying and that's really our star? Um, like right there. Well, it's really strange, ain't it? A dying sun. This stellar relic. First spied by William Herschel in 1787 is nicknamed the Eskimo Nebula, ground-based telescopes. It resembles a face surrounded by a fur parka. Hmm. 
Hmm. That is interesting um, if, if you think about it. So these are all these different images and they don't just have that. You just, that looks like kind of a wild looking plasma you all. Celestial fireworks. Um, puffs of smoke and sparks from Hubble's uh, supernova. A large Magellanic cloud. Wait a minute. A large Magellanic cloud in a nearby galaxy, small companion galaxy to the Milky Way. Did that turn that round? It's a gentle structure, harbors a very powerful spinning neutron star, a central ram remnant. So what's a Magell Magellanic? Magellanic. It's a cloud. I want to see what that is because that's a cloud. And I know NASA talked about if, um, or the NHIC, they are two clouds, two irregular dwarf galaxies in the southern celestial hemisphere orbiting the Milky Way galaxy. These satellite galaxies are numbers of the local group because both show signs of a bar structure. They're reclassified as a Magellanic spiral galaxy. But they called it a cloud. Let's see this. A cloud, an LMC cloud. Hmm. Their peculiar class of stars producing gamma rays and bursts. Supernova. Wonder where they're really at. It's a large Magellanic cloud. Wonder if it's a life form. You think it is? You think that's a life form right there? This Magellanic cloud. Um, the Magellanic cloud. Now it's going to make me want to look. Let's see, is a Magellanic cloud a life form? Hmm. Well, they are, they have been known since ancient times to indigenous people across South America and Africa and from the first millennium in Western Asia. The first preserved mention of the large Magellanic cloud is believed to be in petroglyphs and petroglyphs and rock drawings found in Chile. They may be the objects mentioned by the polymath Ibn Qutamba in his book Al Anwa. So why would now this is something serious. Why would indigenous people draw Magellanic clouds in, and petroglyphs in cave drawings. Why would they do that? That's really um, interesting, you all. Do you think that's um, um, interesting? Why would they do that? Hmm. Ferdinand Magellan um uh oh oh this is a cloud uh cloud solutions um i'm i want to know it's uh it's visible this is visible in earth's southern hemisphere skies along with its companion dwarf galaxy it may have once been a spiral The small Magellan, I want to know how to say that word because I may be saying it wrong. I want to, I want to know how to pronounce it. Okay. Cause I could be saying it wrong and I don't want to say it wrong. Let me, let me see how to say it. 
Magellanic. 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 Okay, Magellanic. Okay, Magellanic. Like magic. Magellanic. Andromeda. Um, some like Andromeda. Magellanic. Magellanic. Magellanic clouds. You know what? Do you think they're a life form? Um, Magellanic clouds. Galileo. Black. Let me do this. Black Magellanic cloud. Magellanic cloud. Well, there is one right there, kind of like that black hole that they discovered, you all. Uh, on June the 10th, they wrote an article about it. There's the black hole. Milky Way black hole. And the two galaxies will inevitably collide. Let me, let me, let me type this in. Uh, I want to see what they say. You can we go right back to this again? Mm. Okay, let's do this again. I want to see if we can um, straight out of. Star Trek, the biomedical boon of virtual reality. No, I don't want to know that. I want to know. No. I want that one article if they did not. Um, I, let me just do this. NIH, Star Trek, and Q. Let's see if I can find that again, you all, because uh, we did it before, and I think I've lost... Do you remember that one that I, that we talked about? And it was in that, um, maybe it was NHIS, and uh, I don't know. Okay, maybe. I can't find it, but anyhow, they said if they came across a black cloud, they would more or less have to admit that it was a life form. Uh, some type of a cloud. And this is Mag Magellanic cloud right here, you all. So, um, and it could be like a, a life form. It really could be. And, oh, okay, this is where we were. How, how did, did I get over there? I, I, I was over here. Where were we at? I, I, which, okay, let me see this. So, how did I get on that one thing? How they talked about ancient people. Okay, indigenous people. Um, been known since ancient times is what they've been known for in the 16th century. They are, um, I don't think they're 75,000 light years away. Many Magellanic clouds. Okay, you all, that's enough. That's enough of that, you all. That really is, I know that's, um, Thousands of gaseous fragments surrounding a dying star. Okay, that's that's interesting. This one right here, there was something like this that was in one of these new Star Trek ep episodes, something like that. And they were intelligent forms of life, and they could um, travel. They could go, I uh, think, back in time or something. My husband watched it, uh, and he was telling me the name of those. And I, I can't remember the name that they gave to a life form that literally looked like that in one of the Star Trek series episodes. I think it was something like that. Um, Intercellular this evening, and they said it was a black hole is a portal to other galaxies, margarine B. Isn't that interesting? Uh, it really is interesting. Let's make these really big, you all, so we can, so we can see them. A lot better because they look kind of wild. I'm trying to push this on here to do this screen, but it's not letting me. Okay, it's letting me now, you all. I didn't want to do that. Distance galaxy in a deep field. Um, let's shrink it down because it's way too big. It's way too big. Arg. There's a spiral galaxy, but look at this. 
So they have this page right here. Is this where I, uh, this is this what I put on there for you all? All of these different um, things. Well, you don't want to look at that, but this is uh, archives of all these NASA stuff. Um, visible Earth collections. Yeah, this is really interesting too. I was looking at this. Angar Wat. Uh, in the Cambodian, tucked deep in the Cambodian rainforest, the ancient Angkor Wat Temper, Temple is considered one of the most valuable architectural sites in Asia. It's, uh, is, it, it's the pinnacle of the city of Angar, Angkor, capital of the once powerful Kimur, Kimur Empire of Southeast Asia. It was built by Suryavarman, Suryavarman, this sounds like Sadarman, but um, Suryavarman II between 1113 and 1150 AD, dedicated to the Hindu god Vishnu. Angkor Wat is a representation of Mount Meru, home of the gods and the center of the Hindu universe. Uh, in addition to its unique pyramid temple, it was, it's covered with intricate bas relief carvings of Hindu epics. Symbolic architectural features are clearly visible in the Iconos image acquired on April the 12th of 2004. It's surrounded by 570 foot wide moat visible in the large image. Oceans at the edge of the universe, a stone causeway this is, did you ever know that if you are in uh, India, is you got this, um, did they say India or did they say Cambodia? Cambodian forest. Did you ever hear of that? Okay, I just like to say that there must be something to all these other gods. I'm going to have to say that I really think that these other gods existed and still do exist. Because, you know, if you think of, of the biblical account, you say that... Thou shall have no other gods before me. That's acknowledging that there are other gods. But yet the biblical God says thou shall have no other gods before me. So isn't that interesting? That in itself, that mere statement, that mere commandment, that there's other gods. There are other gods. Um, so in this Hindu God, who was the Hindu God Vishnu? Because they have lots of gods. They really do. Uh, there's lots of gods throughout history, throughout ancient times, all kinds of them. And where did all of these different types of gods come from? You ever ask yourself that? Where did they all come from? Yeah, because um, the world, there's, they're all over the place, you all. This is... Um, what is that? That's an island in Somalia. Natural disaster. The coast island of western Somalia. Creation into co-creation. Yeah. Uh, something like that. Let's get back to some of these images. Uh, on the solar system connection. Yeah. So. Um, what is that? A crater on the moon? Um, FedEx Field, wait, this photo composite shows an aerial view of FedEx Field in Landover, Maryland, home of Washington Redskins, superimposed on Mars Victoria Crater to give a sense of the crater's scale. Um, is that on the moon? I, I don't know the names of the craters on the moon, but that'd be pretty massive. It really would be massive. Oh, you all got yourself in trouble by Susan B., honey. Now, see, that looks, uh, wow, that's pretty happy face crater. That's the name of it. Mars Global Surveyor. How can that look like the moon? How can, how can that be Mars? Is that Mars or is it the moon, you all? I don't understand it. Or is it something else? Really, I, I am not sure. Hello. Yeah, lower gods, not God, original maker of our soul. See, yeah, there are higher and there's lower ones. That's right, you other there are. Um, yeah, so these are different images. And wow, that's going way up there in the sky. 
a dinosaur killer. We don't want to kill no dinosaurs, but yeah, this is um, some of the strange, what is this? The Geminids um, meteor shower. Why are they going all over the place? Because they're going in all different types of direction of 2010, you all. Oh, you're so much, Kim Daybusk. You're so very, very welcome. Uh, you really are. The landing. Oh, I've never seen the landing site. So let's see this. Apollo 11 site selected for Apollo 14. Uh, Cone Crater. Did they go there? Cone Crater. Hmm, that's interesting. I heard that they could not go back to the moon. And the reason they didn't go back to the moon. Why didn't they go back to the moon? Why didn't we go back to the moon? Let's see the aliens. The real reason you didn't go back to the moon. So you can see these right there. Is because. Um, let's, let's type in the word aliens. I know it's just a gener generic term. Um, why have they? Let's go over here, you all. UFO in sight. See, we got to have some UFOs in here, you all. We're going to do this. We got to talk about a UFO. We really do. And then we got to talk about the aliens, the extraterrestrial beings. The Grays told us not to. Rambo, I did not hear that before. Really? Um, wow. Let's read this. The moon has fascinated human beings since the dawn of time, as it well might. It is truly one of the most mysterious celestial bodies, not only in our solar system, but anywhere in space. With that in mind, then it's no surprise that as soon as we obtain the capability to travel there, we would do. So why have we never returned to the moon? Hmm. Why, though, have we not returned? After six successful missions to our cosmic neighbor with several more missions already planned and budgeted for, the missions to the moon suddenly stopped. And what's more, despite advancements in technology and space exploration, no further manned missions have taken place. When Gene Cernan Hey, do you think CERN is named after him? CERN? Uh, Jack Schmidt and Ronald Evans set foot back on Earth in December of 1972 following the successful Apollo 17 mission to the moon. They would become the last humans to have trodden on the lunar surface. Hmm. Yeah. We will look at some of the possible reasons. Oh my gosh, you all. This is really long. I don't know if you all want to listen to this because it look at, it's way up here on the side. We will look at some of the possible reasons and conspiracies regarding why we haven't been back to the moon, at least not to the public's knowledge, shortly. And indeed, what was behind the sudden drive to get there. But we should look at some bizarre anomalies of the nearest cosmic body. Indeed, these anomalies, if accurate, might suggest an altogether alternative NASA agenda other than mere space exploration and one that would not only um, change what we know about the moon but our entire reality you are we going to stick it in there this is what we're reading from right here boom right there you are our entire reality and those in charge of it before we delve into this fascinating subject, take a moment to check out the video footage below. I'm not going to do that. So they got anomalies on the moon. What was the something that put the moon in orbit? Is the moon too good to be true? The politics of the space race, science, the last two minute silence conspiracy. Wait, was there really a two minute science co silence conspiracy? The music from the far side of the moon. If something was recorded, then there's something there. The dark side of the moon. Might the moon had secrets. So you all might want to go there because I put the link here. And you can click on here and you can watch that man on the moon video from 1969. I'm not, not going to play it. I'm not. A hollow object. Um, secret societies and the Nazi hunt for alien technology. 
aliens on the moon, human extraterrestrials or both, who or what or who's inside the moon? Is the moon an ancient war carrier from elsewhere in the universe? I've heard that like a Dyson sphere, a chilling sp if speculative connection, China's moon mission and claims of a military base, anomalies on the moon. The moon is exactly 400 times smaller than the sun. Is it really? Because when it's in the sky, it looks the same size. It really does. When that moon's in the sky, it looks the same size as the sun, especially when they're side by side. So how can it how can it be in the sky at the same time and be the exact size of the sun? See, that's a good question to ask. If it's 400 times smaller than the sun, that's a really good uh, question to ask. Its distance from the Earth in relation to the overall distance to the sun is exactly 1 400th. Uh, so these figures are not approximate, but they are exact. If it is these measurements that allow us on Earth to experience the total eclipses. Now, come, that doesn't make sense, you all. It really doesn't make sense. There is no way. No way. How can that make sense? How can they be perfect? Perfectly the same size, even though one's way far away. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. Um, it's, just the, it's not the size either. Even its rotation around the Earth is so exact. And without one deviation, that one side of the moon is permanently hidden from us, you all. One side of the moon is permanently hidden from us. What's more, its orbit is perfectly circular as opposed to elliptical as all other known moons. Hello. Hello. Even many craters on the moon, which most of us are aware of, are anomalous. They are all of a similar depth. According to the accepted science, it should not be the case. In fact, the crater should look completely opposite to how they appear with greater variation in depth. So um, if that's the case, okay, you all, let's come over here to my pictures that I took. Um, uh, this, this, this morning I took some pictures of the moon. Let's check that out really fast. They're talking about the moon, uh, that it should be... No, oh, I didn't download it, you all. I didn't download my pictures of the moon from this morning. They're still set on my camera, but this is the moon right here from last last night, yesterday, that I put on here. So these craters on the moon are all the same depth, they said. All the same depth. Okay, so that's that's fine. They're all the same depth. Let's close that out, and um, let's get over here and back to where we're at. So, um, they, theorists, conspiracy theorists have suggested the reason for this is that the moon is an artificial structure with a metallic casing underneath the rocky surface. Um, it might even be a hollow object. A picture of the moon orbiting Earth. Hmm. Mainstream thinking suggests these craters are anomalies due to high velocities of striking meters. Oh, good night, Marjorie. You know, it reminds me of that book, Good Night Moon. Why did they make a children's book, Good Night Moon? They did. My kids had it. So let's see this. So why was the something that put on the moon? What was the something that put the moon in orbit? Let's see this, you all, if we can find out really fast. Um, Roy Shelton. It is important to remember that something had to put the moon in or near its current circular pattern around the Earth. And it's very unlikely that any object just stumbles on the right combination of factors needed to help an object stay in orbit. Something had to put the moon on its altitude, on its course and speed. The question is, what was that something? Russian scientists suggest the moon is not a naturally occurring celestial object at all, but the result of extraterrestrial intervention. Uh, in 1970, the Sputnik magazine, a moon creation of extraterrestrial design, is it? Was it placed there a long time ago and it's not completely natural? 
Um, so there's a short video right here of NASA Apollo missions right here. Uh, the moon might the moon be of intelligent design or a natural object uh, it could be you all it could be let's look at this is the moon too good to be true we cannot help but come to the conclusion that the moon by rights ought not to be there the fact that it is is one of those strokes of luck almost too good to be accepting small planets such as earth with weak gravitational fields might well lack satellites in general, then, when a planet does have satellites, those satellites are much smaller than the planet itself. Therefore, there would be every reason to suspect the moon would be a tiny world, perhaps 30 miles, but it is a giant satellite, 2,160 miles in diameter. How is it then that the tiny Earth has one? So, yeah, welcome to the universe. Um, Erwin Shapiro, NASA claims it seems easier to explain the non-existence of the moon than its existence. Um, so, implications of peaceful space activities for humans. The space race, the 50s. Did they start those in the 50s and 60s? Because you know that... Um, 1947, uh, Admiral Byrd in the center of the Earth and then the um, leader of the people, the beings in the earth, they didn't want their world destroy, destroyed, so they decided they're going to make some contact. Then you have Kennedy. The go to land a man on the moon was solidified when Kennedy announced the U.S. would accomplish this by the 60s. You got the Russians, science and the multiple benefits of exploration. We got the Roswell crash, the American government, Operation Paperclip. Um... The Roswell crash gifted the American military with a plethora of advanced alien technology. Okay, so we got all of that. There they are on the moon. You can see them. Uh, transient lunar phenomenon. So that's... Um, transient lunar phenomenon has been reported on or above the moon's surface. These anomalies include unexplained flashes of light, strange clouds of various colors, glowing spots and more in 1178 several monks noticed a huge flaming torch on the moon in 1787 sir william herschel detected red glowing spots on the dark portion of the moon and julius schmidt noticed a significant change in lana crater lynn crater in 1866 Soviet astronomer saw a half-hour long eruption on the peak of Alphonsus Crater in 1958. In 1968, NASA published a summary of an investigation into the phenomenons. Uh, it listed 9,600 strange occurrences on the lunar surface over hundreds of years, and the mysteries continue, you all. Um, Look at that, a 12-mile-long a bridge-like structure on the edge of a crater. Uh, one of the editors of that, look at that, you all. This is, this is wild. Look at that, a small, a small step before a giant cover-up, you all. Yeah, this is, um, it's wild. It's really wild. So according, here's this, we won't read too much of this because it's way too long. So let's see this right here. While the world looked on in celebration and fascination, the ast astronauts were 200,000 miles from them on a piece of rock careering, careering, carrying around the planet, supposed to be careening around the planet at hundreds of thousands of miles. The, astro the astronauts themselves were taking in their alien surroundings. And according to some UFO researchers, it is, is a statement closer than the truth. I can't even get the words out, you all. So, um, the reasons, let's, let's look at this. The television audience could hear exchanges between the astronauts and mission control at Houston, Texas. What most were unaware of was the astronauts had access to another line. 
one that the audience could not hear. The reasons for this were simple. If they had any kind of emergency or simply anything of a personal nature, they did not want millions of people to hear, they could switch to this channel. And it was also open to use for the other predetermined purposes. According to Neil Armstrong, the first man to step foot on the moon, would switch to this channel and state to the medical officer in Houston that they're here. They're parked on the side of the crater and they're watching us. Buzz Aldrin would also claim to have witnessed bizarre activity. I saw this illumination that was moving with respect to the stars. We were smart enough to not say, Houston, there's a light out there that's following us. So technically, it is an unidentified flying object. So you all can, you can go there. What's a two minute conspiracy? Um, ham radio, the UFOs, look at this. They say Buzz Aldrin would state that the UFOs were lined up waiting for us. And this would corroborate the apparent claims made by Armstrong on the private broadcast line. Whether the recording of Aldrin speaking during this mysterious two minute ever finds its way to the public domain remains to be unseen. If indeed it was something more than just a mere technical malfunction. So that was back then you all, it was a ham radio operators, alleged interceptions by ham radio operators. Music from the far side of the moon um, so you can see it's got lots of stuff in it, you all. Uh, yeah, so this is making me tired. This is making me tired. It really is. So here's some pictures of this moon. Just go through it really fast. The two sides of the moon. We've never seen the other side of the moon. Have you seen it? Because I haven't seen it. Well, it looks like a rock on that side. Someone said that it's like a replica of the United, uh, United States, of the Earth itself. Um, the secret of the dark side, is it a hollow object? Um, Nazi hunt for alien technology, artificial structures, you all, it's, it's all kinds of stuff on here. Aliens on the Moon Project Blue Book tall alien being looking at the astronaut's position. Um, hmm. Right there. Well, it could be some kind of a being. It could be dancing filament. Uh, it could be filament on the moon too. You, I'm not going to read any more of that at all. I'm not. Um, but um, that's how we got on it. We're sitting here looking at the uh, these archive photos of the Apollo 14 landing site they chose to land there is what happened and um, we found these in um, right here and I've, I've put the I put the link here if you if you go backwards let me put the original link here all of the NASA archives right here that you can look at you can go check them out it's pretty neat Susan B honey it make me tired it really did made me a tad bit tired but um, yeah this is what's their NASA image of the day let's see um, I might got myself in trouble already you all uh, okay I don't see it okay but anyhow they got all kinds of um, things here collections you might see something on here like what's that right there doesn't that look strange crater Dedalius. I don't know what that's on. If that's on the moon or what. Dedalius. Looks kind of wild. It does, you all. Really wild. Let me put this back to me. I am going to go. I've done made myself tired. I did. Looking at this. I was tired before I came on here. But I thought if I'm going to look at it, I might as well come on here too. So you can see what I was looking at also. But I'm going to go, so that's this right here is from the Hubble telescope when that reopened its eye on the universe, uh, is what it is, yeah. 
skyscrapers and bridges so really there the moon is a very uh, mysterious and um, it's a very uh, interesting subject to look at it really is and you can check out um, a playlist on here I got a playlist on the moon itself with different images and a video footage of it you can check it out I've seen weird things on the moon I have uh, flying wing beings <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so with that being said, hello wherever you are in any part of the world. Hello from my heart to yours, love. You have a wonderful evening, you all. And um, yeah, it's wild. I would check that out if you even like looking at um, pictures of space or other things like that. Or do some research on that moon because um, I think there's a lot out there to discover if you are so inclined. 